applications. We really appreciate all Mike the effort. Got that... it. What's... I'm sorry. I, I was muted. I was trying to tell you that I, I was on the phone with him. Oh, and, okay. And so he was trying to find the link. So I think oh. he This meeting right. is being recorded by the phone. Oh, there person. he is. Hi, Andy. Better late than never. Nope, you're here. We just are getting started. Okay. Um, you got it. I guess so. Well, we oh, have a full right. Great. We have a full agenda. We'll get through as much as we can. I uh, Some of the items at the end, we can postpone till two weeks from now if we need to. Um, I wanted to first start by welcoming Risa um, Smith-Fried. She's our new representative from the Housing Authority. So um, we're awfully glad to have her here. Gives us a full nine. We haven't had a full nine in the couple of years I've been involved with the, um, the CPA. So I thought just to take a minute or two to quick go around and introduce ourselves and say whatever we want to say. Um, I'll start. I'm Mary Thayer. I've actually, this is, I'm just starting. I've been on the committee since um, February of 2020, so three years now. And um, I, I've experienced in the open space, the housing, and the historical. So I have enjoyed being on this committee. Arisa, why don't you introduce yourself, and then we'll go around the committee. Whoops, you have to unmute yourself. No, you didn't. Uh, Oops, you're, you're still not, you're still muted, Risa. Down at the bottom, the yeah. the little um button that says mute, unmute, if you click on that. If you drag your mouse toward the bottom of your screen, it should be at the bottom left corner. Yep. There's one that says um, mute. Yeah, there, I there hit the wrong button. And it tried to access my photos. So, <laughs> so Risa Smith Freed, and uh, I'm on the Board of Commissioners for the Housing Authority. And I'm very, very happy to be here. And this will be my learning curve night. Okay. You're most welcome to be here. Edwin? Uh, I am Edwin Matusko. I'm the CPA committee member from the Conservation Commission, and I've been on the CPA for a number of years. And the past chair. And the past chair, yes. You're an original member, right? Uh, I don't know if I'm original. I may have been in the second group, but on that I'm not sure. But. Mark, do you want to? Continue on. Oh yeah, I don't know what order I am on everyone else's box. Uh, I'm Mark Dunn. I'm the uh, planning board designation uh, designee, and I am also the clerk because I really, really want to be the clerk. <laughs> now, now say that like you really mean it. <laughs> <laughs> Diane. You have to unmute. Yeah. Hello, I'm Diane Karis Chokis. I'm here on behalf of Park and Rec. I think I've been a member of this committee for about five years, Mary, somewhere around then. Um, whenever Andy Klopacki left or was transitioning out, and I've been in the Park and Rec Commission for over 10 years. That, Denise? Hi, I'm Denise Barstomans. I'm the representative for the Historical Commission, um, and I've been on since. Uh, February 2020, so three years, um, and I've been on the Historical Commission since 2017. Andy Klopacki? I'm Andy Klopacki. I'm the representative of uh, CPA from the Finance Committee, uh, and uh, this is my second uh, uh, round with the uh, CPA. I was on the committee for about five years for Park and Rec, uh, preceding Diane. Great. Andy Morris-Friedman. Hi there, welcome to CPA, uh, best committee in town, I think. Uh, I'm Andy Morris Friedman. I'm a former chair. Uh, I've been on the committee a long time and uh, I, I really, it's, it's just, it's so rewarding. And Mary's such a great chair that it's really easy to serve. Thank you. Cassie? Yeah. Oh. Hi, my name is Cassandra Cassie Gonzalez. I live in Hadley and I am just here as a CPA committee person, no other affiliation with 
the town, but it has been really enjoyable and neat to see the workings of our town in this way. Great. I got everyone, right? Yeah. All right. Well, first we have our September 26 minutes. Um, and does, did everyone have a chance to read them through? Mm -hmm. Would someone like to make a motion to accept or to motion to um, accept the minutes? I move we accept the minutes as presented. Second, anyone? I second them. And any discussion other than to say thank you, Mark, for great yeah. minutes. And Mark had to watch the meeting again to produce the minutes. So that's, that's real dedication. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of between houses. I should be moving in hopefully by the end of this week, but uh, yeah, so I didn't know where the notes were. So it was a pleasure to watch you all again. <laughs> okay. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Um, anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? I have to abstain because I wasn't present at the September meeting. Very good. Thank you. So eight eight zero one with Risa. Eight, seven, one. Um, treasurer's report. Let me put that up. Um, I've got a lot of reports here. I just want to make sure I grab the right one. Um, can, yeah. can you see that okay? Yep. All right. Yep. Cassie, you're on. Oh, she have to unmute. Yes. So we have um, from the end of December because January's numbers are not ready yet, but they might be before we reconvene in two weeks. So if they are, um, Mary is going to get the new numbers and we'll update. So as of December 31st, there is, was $208,339 in the housing set aside. Mm -hmm. The general fund reserve is at 500,000 where we try to keep it. The general fund balance is $1,158,423. Mm -hmm. And the subtotal is one, million eight hundred sixty six thousand seven hundred and sixty two dollars and there is one million three hundred ninety four thousand three hundred and twenty seven dollars reserved for expenditures so the entire fund was at three million two hundred and sixty one thousand and eighty nine dollars then um for what we'll be getting in we received um some money and we're expecting some more. So the bottom number is going to be bigger, but they're 8341. These are for future revenue, right, Mary? By so, the end of June? Yeah, this well, this is what we've already collected so far. And and the first couple are just for people that paid late. They're they're, you know, interest and penalties. And so the the big figure is how much has been collected on the first two go arounds of the real estate taxes um, that have been collected in the year, the fiscal year. Okay. Thank you so much, Mary. Can I interrupt? Um, how much was yeah, the open space? Bet. How much was that line six? I can't quite see it. Open so space. We we that's also you, zero. Yeah, we used up all the open space and historic set asides at the last okay. um, town meeting. Okay. So they're starting out at zero. Thank you. So we are have collected $146,149 for the surcharge. And from the state, we've received $224,659. That brings it to 371,000. There was a, a loss in value this past year, which is why returnings on investment is a negative value. 
And then the total added to the CPA fund here says $357,369, but we are expecting $146,000 um, in surcharges from the town again, as well as another 41,000 from the state. Is that right, Mary, 41? The total's right, yeah, 61. Okay. It's, we received, we got a 93% match again. Last year, it was 100%, and this year it was 93%. So they sent another 61,651 in January, which is fantastic. Only 17 towns did as well as we did or more out of the almost 200 in the state. And most towns and cities got 38%. So our 93% match is great. Mm -hmm. um, and part of that's because we're at the 3%. Part of it's because we're a small town. It's easier to match Hadley than it is Boston with their 20 million. So, mm -hmm. um, or a lot of other cities that are, you know, have bigger dollar values. But, and we use it too. I think that that, that, that has an impact. Um, so hopefully we'll be about 557 total revenue added um, for the fiscal year, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, all right, I'm gonna stop sharing. Any other, any questions on that or um, Andy? Yeah, I have a question. The um, uh, Last time when we voted to do the bonding for the school fields, um, part of the, some percentage of the town uh, taxes raised has to go to paying those bonds back. I assume that hasn't started? It has not started and it may not, the, the project hasn't started itself. And when it does start, they're gonna use first um, what the CPA is paying, which is about 750,000 or a little more than that. Um, actually, I, I can look. Um, 796,000 of the bill will first be paid out of the CPA funds. And then the balance of it, which is 750,000 will be borrowed, but it'll first be short-term borrowing. Um, and then, so it may not be till 2024 that the borrowing takes place. And Linda Sanderson will be working on that and combining it with other borrowing the town's doing to help reduce fees and everything for setting the borrowing up. And, you know, if we're in a position to pay more of it, we could do that and even not borrow as much. You know, that's something we can discuss in the future. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Any other questions or? Oh, I, I'm sorry, I have one more question. Do we, so we have enough money to cover all the asks if we decide to fund them all completely? Um, tonight. Tonight. Um, well, next, in yeah. two weeks. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes, we do, especially with what's coming in for um, the rest of the year. We still have two real, you know, there are bills due for February 1st and May 1st that aren't included in our figures. So. We still would have enough for the five hundred thousand dollar reserve, and and still not, you know. Obviously, we can't touch the housing allotment. Um, so that's our well, new member's job, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's all of our job, Risa. <laughs> um, so one of the things that we discuss is how much to set aside for um, each bucket. And I'm going to share that same report. And we didn't um, vote on Ted Treasurer's report, did we? Do we usually vote on the report? Well, I don't know. I don't we just do. present it. Yeah. You, we can certainly vote on it. Does somebody want to vote? Well, there's, no, there's, there's no action to be taken on it. Right. right. So. right. I vote that we don't vote. <laughs> okay. I second that. Yeah. <laughs> One last thing. I don't know why I have this apps thing showing up. But um, thank you for raising the question, Edward. Thank you. So what we're supposed to do is set aside 10% of the anticipated, really 2024 income um, into each of the three buckets, the, the housing, historic, and open space recreation. Um, and we've... It's hard to predict 2024 because we don't know the state part. We've often looked at what we predict the current year to be. 
in the current year, we think will be about 560,000, though it may dip down more if we lose more on investment. Um, so last year we did 50,000. I thought 50,000 was another, was a good figure for this year as well. Um, Cause we think we'll be right, you know, 50 to 55, 550,000 total. Um, how does that sound to people? That sounds good as long as we're not cutting ourselves too short. That's all. It's, you know, we, we aren't losing the money. It's just where it's designated to go. And we are supposed to do the 10%. Um, so the, want, the anticipated revenue is what? Anticipated revenue for fiscal year um, 23 is um, three hundred about 550,000. Okay. Depending on what happens on earnings on investment. Okay. So that would make 10% 55,000 for the, the three buckets, right? Except I worry about going that high because we just don't know about the earnings. Um, okay. That's okay. kind of why I suggested the 50. Uh, I, that sounds good to me. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I'll make a motion that we set aside 50,000 for the 10% figure in each of the three buckets. I'll second that motion. Any other discussion? No. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? All right. That passed nine to zero. Um, yes. Yeah. And this will be in the consent portion of the warrant, probably? It will be, yeah, along okay. with if we do any extensions or clawbacks, I expect it to be. Um, I'd like to wait on the CPA expenses, and we can vote on that next time. All right. So CPA applications. Um, why don't we start? Let me just pull this up. Why don't we start with a sampler? which is Alan. I've got the attachments I can show as we go through as you'd like. Um, maybe I'll put up the... He's frozen. Okay. Oh, he's frozen. Alan, are you there? You may have stepped away. Um, well, let's jump ahead then to Brian Peterson. Are you available? Yes, Hi, Brian. Why don't we do, um, let me just flip this around. Why don't we do Lake Warner then first? And, we do and again, I thank you all for all the care that was put into each of these applications. All right, Mary, can I, before we start with Lake Warner, can I announce to the committee that my wife is on the board of the um, Friends of Lake Warner? Who is asking for the money? I'm a former board member of that uh, myself. Uh, there's no strict conflict of interest uh, provisions for, for various technical reasons, um, but I just wanted to ask if any of the board was uncomfortable with my participating in the discussion. Nope, don't have a problem, Andy. If there was, I I wouldn't. So. I guess one way to look at it is, Andy, is do you benefit financially at all from any of this outcome? Well, no, I don't benefit. My wife doesn't benefit. Right. Plus, uh, our committee is not the um, deciding body. And so technically, there is no conflict of interest. But I just wanted to come clean. No, thank you. I <laughs> <laughs> um, Brian, do you want me to share the application or what would be helpful here? Um, what, whatever you think is the best. Um, would you like me to give a general overview or has sure. everybody read it and you just have questions or how does it normally proceed here? I think if you can introduce it is nice. Okay, sure thing. Uh, so my name is Brian Pearson. I am a Hadley resident uh, for the past 10 years. I have been on the board of Lake Warner for almost two years now and uh, working with Michelle and Tom Harris 
um, who's also on the board there. And we have uh, decided as a board to move forward with what we're calling a lake management plan. And we wanna work with a local um, engineering consulting firm to assist us in developing a technical plan for moving forward with um, what are the, the most appropriate things to do to improve the water quality in Lake Warner. And so we're asking for a little less than $20,000 to help develop this proposal. We'll be contributing about 25% of the funds to do that. Uh, we anticipate the project will take from uh, May until September, basically over the summer of this year, where, where they the proposed firm will be collecting some water samples and sediment samples, um, some plant surveys uh, to look at invasive species, and then they'll be writing a technical report, which we anticipate will uh, eventually lead to requests for additional funds to help us with uh, water quality improvement with the lake. I'm trying to scribble this down, Brian, and you said you were anticipating time frame to be May to September, is that right? Yes, for the development of the, the, the lake management plan. Okay. You know, I guess we should um, move to, to vote on this, correct, for our discussion? Um, <clears throat> would somebody like to make a motion to... Oh, so then we can discuss and ask questions. Right. I would move that we... Uh, recommend this for uh, town meeting approval as we'll do that next meeting as submitted and then yeah do we vote on it or we're just going to or oh that's true mark we'll do that next week thank you you're right we're not I think you're right, Edwin, yeah. yeah yeah we're ahead of ourselves so this so, is more an informational this is more informational right. all right yeah. thank you right. so strike that yeah <laughs> Um, and Brian, you certainly put together a nice presentation for us. So this is just the first phase of, you know, to find out what's needed to do to, to improve the water quality. And then the next phase will be to hopefully follow through on the recommendations. Um, what, what, do you have other funding sources that you might be able to use for the next phase, do you think, or, um, how uh, that's a good question, Mary. Uh, um, you know, we would probably plan on doing fundraising and and potentially there are state funds um, through DEP or Fish and Wildlife that we can potentially access, but I, I can't uh, say for sure if that's a possibility. Would that be part of, would that be something the engineering firm might be able to help with, do you think, or um, part of this? Uh, we could ask them to include that in the scope of work. Okay. I have no idea how much something like this would eventually cost, but it certainly would be nice to clean up the water. Sure. One, I, one uh, initial estimate, just to give a sense, um, you know, the the Friends of Lake Warner has been around for about 10 years, but the, the pond itself has been the subject of a lot of uh, research by the state and also UMass. And um, there's been quite a bit of work done um, and Jason Johnson, which some of you uh, may know him, he's worked closely a, a, in a more formal role as an employee of the Lake Association and also has helped us um, continue advising us. And he works quite a bit with a number of organizations that are uh, partnering with us and that we work with to study and understand the watershed. Um, and so quite a bit of work has been done. Um, you know, there, there are a lot of um, watershed issues. Um, Lake Warner is at the bottom of the watershed. It comes all the way up from like Atkins, Leverett Pond, North Amherst, and it all washes down into um, Lake Warner. And uh, so there's an accumulation of uh, problems essentially with the water. But, you know, one of the, the recommended treatments is uh, using um, an aluminum treatment, which bonds to uh, phosphate. There's a high phosphate level in the water, and that's what causes the all the high algae and uh, invasive species to thrive there. And in order to uh, control the phosphate, you can um, 
treat it with aluminum, which will bond to the phosphate and uh, allow more oxygen into the water. Phosphate essentially keeps oxygen out of the water. Um, and that is probably the avenue that we're most likely to pursue. Um, An initial, very initial S, sorry, your question? No? Um, and very initial estimate on a uh, potential aluminum treatment of the lake, which would include, uh, you can treat the water column, which is a kind of a short-term solution, but there is a kind of a buildup of phosphate in the sediment from years and years of accumulation. So to really have a long-term impact, um, you really need to get the phosphate out of the sediment because continued release of the phosphate from the sediment really causes the prolonged inhibition of the oxygen in the water. Um, and so this is a more intensive aluminum treatment of the lake involving the sediment. Something like that, it only takes a couple of days, but because it's such an extensive treatment, um, it requires quite a bit of work. But um, initial estimates are uh, right around 200 to $225,000 for that type of treatment. Um, so, it, you know, it just to kind of give a sense of where we're going in the future, it's, it is a fairly big number for something like that. Um, you know, other other treatment methods you can compare it to, though, that can be quite a bit more expensive. For example, you can dredge out the sediments. And there are a lot of uh, permitting requirements and also disposal of the dredged materials. But, you know, then you're talking up into the tens and twenties of millions of dollars, depending on what they find in the sediment. So, um, you know, that does in comparison make the phosphate treatment look pretty reasonable, um, kind of on a scale. Yeah. Brian, I'm Go sorry. Ahead. Go ahead, I was, Mark. I was scribbling notes and I missed the order of magnitude number that you tossed out. Sure. Yeah. So, um, you know, a, a phosphate treatment um, for the water column and the sediment is around 200 to 225,000. We've seen estimates, but a, a complete dredging of the lake would, you know, it, it really depends on the type of disposal that you have to do that drives the number. But, you know, even like a level one um, toxicity would result in, you know, between a 15 and $20 million project. Sure, sure. And, and that's probably an extreme. Uh, measure, but you know, so th this is a, a definitely uh, uh, less financially <laughs> and uh, environmentally impactful type of treatment. But again, I'm I'm more the the guy asking for the money and not the guy that that makes the recommendations on the environmental and and the specific techniques. And that's why we're asking for the funding is so we can have these experts um, help us out on that. And um, we're, we're proposing to work with SWCA, which is, um, it's actually a, a national-based engineering firm, but they do have an office in Amherst, and they've worked with um, the Friends of Leverett Pond to develop uh, pretty much the same thing, different management plan, because it's a different water body, but um, they do have a lake management plan now that was, uh, they developed in cooperation with the Friends of Leverett Pond um, to come up with a, a plan. They have different types of invasive species, particularly the Asian milfoil there that they've actually opted to treat with herbicides. So that's a little bit different situation, but um, you know, the firm itself is a firm from the area and it's a firm that has experience working with lake associations. And we've included um, you know, letter of recommendation from the Friends of Leverett Pond as part of our application. Right. I like how you want to do a community survey too, Brian. Thank you for seeing how people what, you know. The people that certainly use the lake the most, what they think is the priorities. Um, yes, we hope to um, have some volunteers over the summer that can um, work at the boat ramp and and just kind of get a sense of what people are doing there. There's definitely a lot of people fishing on the lake that we've seen over the over the summer, and a lot of people enjoy you know the kayaking and the birding and seeing the wildlife on the lake. And I have a question. Hi. Um, hey, Brian, thank you very much for putting together a really good application. We truly appreciate it. But how have have uh, the Friends of Lake Warner, have they come, have they solved the problem of 
who owns the water with the lake because from the last time that we did this in 2017 or so, uh, it was the people owned to the to the to the brook and the backside of Lake Warner. So that's a small portion of the lake. Um, how, uh, how have you solved that problem with going and spreading aluminum over the entire surface of the lake? Um, that hasn't been on any of the, the meetings that I've attended, Edwin, so I, I can't really answer to that question or the history of that question. Um, you know, as, as an, as, uh, the Friends of Lake Warner as an organization owns uh, six acres of land on the north side of the pond. Um, and then, you know, we own the dam. But it, as for the, the water, um, I mean, it, it is a great pond. And I guess as a great pond, it's a, it is a, a state water body accessible to the public. So I'm not sure there is a ownership of the actual water in the lake, but I, I'm not really speaking from my no, own knowledge base here. Mm. Okay, well, I, I don't, I, like I said, I, I just kind of read, I'm trying to remember from previous meetings what we've uh, determined and stuff, and then people didn't want anything to do with the lake because of the liability reasons involved. And it, and it seemed to be better off that it was underwater and it's not going to dis, disperse to the atmosphere where it's going to affect a lot of people. But. Is that some of what the survey is going to look at, Brian, is what, what, you know, chemicals or what, what you're trying to work with? Um, um, I'm not sure if they do any sort of um, testing for toxicity per se. I, I think they're doing more like standard um, water quality tests based on, you know, the typical things found in the runoff. But, um, you know, I can follow up with them and see what what sort of uh, technical analysis they're doing with the with the water in the sediment and, and have a better answer at our next meeting for that. Well, good. Thank you. I, I do know that if you uh, pump water from the pond, you do a magical stuff to your to your crops. So I and I don't know if that's because of the, the the sediment in it or what, but boy, you really do a heck of a, a heck of a job with the with the water from the lake. Any other questions? Yeah. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. And uh, I lost my mic there for a few minutes. Um, I guess my question was on the potential next phase. Um, if we're looking at, uh, I believe you said 200 to $225,000, at what point would you approach that if there was time for uh, some of that phosphorus that is currently in the um, in the sediment, if the, uh, the stuff that's in the water column is sequestered, uh, maybe that phosphorus would come back. Uh, I mean, what's the delay or what's the phase for um, uh, the time frame for phase two? And how would you guys, uh, how would the uh, group go look to fund that phase? Yes, so the phase two treatment, I guess, would start if we went ahead with the phosphate being one of the possible actions that we take on our management plan, but a management plan itself could, you know, focus on the next 10 years and, you know, how are we, how are we going to deal with water chestnuts and, um, you know, how are we going to work with uh, other partners in the watershed? So it, you know, it will be broader in scope than just the specific treatment that I mentioned, uh, but the, an aluminum treatment, like I said, it only takes a couple days. So it would really depend on, us uh, coming up with the funding to uh, take that on. Um, and in terms of uh, how we do that, you know, we mentioned uh, working with SWCA on potential funding sources and, um, you know, any 
company that we'd be working with to to come uh, apply. There's only uh, a couple that can do that. They certainly could advise us on that. And then, you know, looking uh, to do fundraising with people in the watershed, as well as, you know, coming back for more CPA funds as well. Has the runoff coming into Lake Warner improved over the years? I mean, from the tributaries and upstream? Um, has well, I, I mean, I can't, you know, give a real technical answer to that question, Mary. I can say that um, there has been a lot of work done and there has been a lot of improvement um, over the years. You know, so they've identified um, what they call um, non NPS non-point source pollution, and they have identified, you know, different areas where pollution is coming into the watershed and made improvements in drainage and uh, water shed uh, that's causing pollution in the lake. So I would say, yes, it's definitely improved uh, over the last 10 years, but it's definitely something that, that we need to keep working with our partners in the watershed on. Thank you. <clears throat> Andy? Um, so Brian, one reason why I support this proposal is because you're asking money for the plan first, uh, and then you're going to implement the plan uh, after everyone has seen it and everyone can agree on it. Um, maybe they'll suggest this aluminum treatment and maybe they won't, right? That's why you have to do the study. Um, yeah. But I think the um, one of the ways to use CPA money for this is to protect the use of the pond as a recreational resource for the town, particularly uh, cyanobacteria and um, other uh, pollution that will affect users of the pond. Will the study look into that? Well, the, I, those are, um, you know, a direct result of the poor water quality. So improving the water quality will reduce the uh, impact of those types of uh, algae outbreaks. Okay, so it's not just about protecting fish and birds, it's also about protecting the people who use the pond. Right, yeah, so when you have a cyanobacteria outbreak, you, you really, uh, it's recommended that you not go in the water, obviously, but even, you know, you can go in if you're a paddler, but if you get it on your hands and touch your whatever, you can get infected by it. So it's recommended that you not go in there because it is a, a significant health risk coming into contact with it. Right. You know, the friends have come before this committee several times before, and all of their projects have been run really well, completed in time uh, for the amount of money budgeted. Um, and uh, I come to really respect their ability to use the CPA money wisely. And so I, I support this uh, proposal. Any other questions or comments? Cassandra has one. Cassandra, sorry, I can't see everybody all at once here. Go ahead, Cassandra. Oh, if you're talking, muted. you're muted. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, we can. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Oops, now we can't hear you. <laughs> I'm sorry, it all got garbled for a moment and then I heard my name. <laughs> now we're hearing you again, so speak quick. Okay. Do, you, do you have a question on the um, Lake Warner project? No, I don't. Oh, okay, <laughs> all right. Misunderstanding there. <laughs> yep. Um, well, Brian, thank you very much. And yeah, if you can check into the few, I forget now what you were going to check on or what, what was going to be tested. Um, perhaps right. if you could look at that. Um, but we'll. Yes, I'll do that. Okay, great. So thank we'll see you. you again in two weeks. Okay, thank you, everyone. All right, so Brian, thanks. you don't have to stay for the rest of the meeting. You, you can go. Okay, thanks. Have a good night. Bye bye. Thank you. Alan, would you like to talk about your, the samplers? 
And Ellen, we can't hear you either. You're not muted. No. No. Nope. No. Maybe he should to... rejoin us in a minute after restarting Zoom. Yeah, do you want to try signing on again? Looks frozen. Maybe he's doing that now. He should check his volume on his uh, computer. He might have hit a, the volume off. Yeah, it's for um, a microphone though. It shows that he's not muted, so. Um. Mm. Yeah, I had a headset on earlier and it took my microphone out, so I had to restart. Ellen, you wanna sign off and rejoin the meeting? Okay. okay. Um, I'll give him just a minute. None of this ever happened before Zoom. <laughs> I can show the. Show the sampler. I don't know what this is. They did a nice job of yeah, showing um, who had done them and made them from the late 1700s up to the early 1900s. And I guess they were, they had a professional come in and explain what would be needed to, to preserve them. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe we should, um, have Alan wait again <laughs> and we'll oh let's see um he's back say something Alan no. you hear me now yes, yes we can, hear we you. Can. can you hear us okay can you hear me yep. yes can you hear us okay yes all right well you're okay. on you that like works <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so I'm Alan Weinberg. Uh, I'm here today, not as um, for the cemetery projects which I've done in the past, uh, but um, as a member of the Historical Society, which is a nonprofit, um, not a government agency uh, organization involved in preserving and uh, uh, disseminating artifacts, information, documents about Hadley's history. We, uh, our headquarters are at 12 Middle Street in, uh, in Hadley. Um, we also put on a number of programs, usually at the new library. And I think this is the first application that uh, the Historical Society has made for CPA funds. I could be wrong, but I, I don't recall any others. Um, other historical societies, have, as I'm sure you're aware, have um, uh, done many projects uh, using CPA funds, but this is this would be our first. And what we're asking for <clears throat> is eighteen thousand dollars. We would be contributing one thousand dollars in order to preserve our, our Hadley samplers. Um, we have ten needlepoint samplers, which were made by young women and girls. Um, mostly from Hadley or they had family connections to Hadley from the uh, as early as 1795 to the early 19th century. Uh, they, if you're not familiar with these samplers, they're, they're a needlepoint that um, young women and girls did 
uh, to practice and improve their skills, but also to create um, mementos and uh, objects of art, which uh, in many cases were preserved by the families and proudly displayed. Um, these girls were usually between the ages of seven and 15 when they did these uh, things. They're quite lovely and they're, they're you know, 200 years old. They have uh, strong Hadley connections and uh, we have um, had them, the historical societies had them for quite a number of years. They've been stored, most of them, a couple of them have been framed but most of them are just unframed and they were folded up and put in a drawer. Uh, and I don't think they were displayed too often, maybe in the 59 um, celebration of the town, some of them might've been on display, but uh, we would like to have them restored properly, um, cleaned, mounted on acid-free um, boards, um, decreased, uh, you can read the report. The, uh, the, we had a professional conservator uh, provide a, a, an estimate of what would be needed and how much it would cost. It's mm -hmm. pretty expensive, actually. Um, but these things are one of a kind, and they're um, part of Hadley's uh, heritage, and they're beautiful. Um, and uh, so what we'd like to do, we're asking for $18,000. That's not the full amount. Uh, of what the conservator uh, suggested. We um, were asking for primarily the conservation on the samples themselves. What we are not asking for is money for framing. Um, we'll, um, because that's, that's really expensive. We think we can get uh, a more local framer to do the, the kind of framing that's necessary, but um, we'll deal with that down the road. Um, and, um, uh, in any case, um, this is what we're asking for. Uh, if we do get the money, we'll have the work done, hopefully by the end of the year. And oh, well, one other thing is we are planning to have an event at the public library on, I think it's April 23rd. We're gonna display the, the uh, framed and unframed samplers. We're gonna have a speaker, uh, Lynn Anderson, who's, the, who's a national expert on samplers. She is the director of the National Sampler Project in, mm. in uh, California. She's coming out here. She's seen the samplers. She's crazy about them. And she's very excited about them. And she's coming out here to give a talk on, on, on these samplers and on the general um, um, you know, the art and history of uh, samplers in, in uh, Western Mass. So that's, the, that's my presentation. And I hope you've had a chance to look at the materials that we prepared. Mm -hmm. You're very thorough, Alan, thank you. Um, questions or comments? No, well, you know that you're gonna have to present, your, you're gonna have to defend your case before the town meeting if we do vote in favor of these, right? Oh, yeah. really? That's a surprise. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Of course, yeah. Now, I, unfortunately, um, and I'll be I'll be there for the town meeting. No, no question, um, and probably other members of the historical society. But uh, for the next your next meeting, which I think is on the twenty seventh, I'm going to be uh, out of the state. I'm going to try to join by Zoom, uh, but I can't guarantee it. This this almost didn't work, and I'm in Hadley, so uh, my apologies. Um, if I don't make it, maybe I can call in on the phone on the 27th. Okay, thank you. Um, anyone else with questions or comments? Um, Andy? It's hard to think of a more worthy project of CPA support than this, uh, than this project. Um, the samplers are a treasure of Hadley history um, and it's great to be able to preserve them for future generations and to know that they're gonna be um, available for the public to look at and admire and to bring history alive. Um, has there been any thought about the samplers at the Porter Phelps Huntington House, about including them in your April um, uh, program or possibly including them in the restoration process? 
process. Or is this uh, totally separate? Well, I can't speak for the Port of Phelps. I mean, obviously, we'd be happy to cooperate with them. I'm not sure. I, I've never seen their samplers. Um, but the um, the program on the 23rd specifically mentions if anybody else has got samples they'd like to bring and have evaluated by uh, by Lynn Anderson, the expert, um, uh, that people are welcome to do that. So, yeah, we'd love to have a wider display of uh, of other samples, especially from Hadley or, and the surrounding area. I, I have seen the ones from De historic Deerfield. Uh, they have some um, that are actually, some are re actually by people who are related to the Hadley folks who did these samplers. But uh, historic Deerfield has restored theirs already uh, and they're on display. I don't know about Port of Phelps, um, if they have, they maybe, maybe they've done that already. I, I will check that though, that's a good, good question. But might be nice to include them. Yeah, actually, actually, now that I think of it, Marla Miller is the one who put me in contact with Lynn Anderson. And of course, Marla is on the board of uh, Port of Phelps. She's deeply involved in stuff that goes on. I, I would have thought she would have mentioned something about Port of Phelps having samplers that need restoration as well. So maybe they just don't, but I, I will double check that for sure. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Well, thank you, Alan, very much. And thank you for your thorough um, submission of the, for the application and, and the attachments. Oh. And I would just ditto Andy's uh, support. And mine as well. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Next, we're going to do um, the historical commissions. Um, we've got Denise here and Diana West and maybe some others. Um, welcome and thank you for joining us, Diana. Uh, and Denise, of course. <laughs> um, we'll let you present yours as well. And if you want me to show, I've got everything here. If you want me to show any of this, um, uh, Mary, if you could, I would appreciate if you could show it. It's okay. uh, I, that's one of the things I was unable to copy up. All right, let me go on. It to was there. very long. Yes, was I'm that the one on that was 147 pages? Uh, 111 plus, I think, five pages of the actual application. So okay, wow. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's the 111 pages, but <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Diana West. I use she, her pronouns, and I am presenting the Hadley Historical Commission tonight. I am the chairperson. Denise Barstow is also here, as well as Courtney Meyer on behalf of the Historical Commission. And we have put together a proposal for three projects we have been working on for quite some time. They are four signs, which include historical information about Hockenham Village, the Hadley um, Center Historic District, which includes the West Street Common, uh, North Hadley Historic District, and uh, so there's two signs in the center of town. Um, by the one will be by the Goodwin Memorial Building, and one will be on the Common. And then we also have been working on updating the West Street walking tour. This dates back to 1987, and then, as far as we know, was updated again around 2012 by the Hadley 350th Committee in collaboration with the Historical Commission. And uh, member Courtney Meyer has taken on the bulk of that work as a West Street resident herself. And then our third project is a audio driving tour. And this tour starts you in Hockenham, takes you up Route 47 North, the center of town, and then west over to West Street, and then back up north to Route 47 through North Hadley. And these projects date back to, I think we first started research for the signs back in 2018. And uh, they all three coexist together. Um, a lot of the same research went into both. The signs are sort of a starting point of an overview of those sections of town that you can then go more in depth with the driving tour and the walking tour. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Does anybody want to see uh, more of the visuals? Is it going to be updated on a regular basis or is it just going to be just a one shot deal? Uh, which one are you referring to? All of them. So the signs, since they are 
Is the signs are signs. They're just yeah. going to be whatever is there. <laughs> yep. They the audio really focus. tour, the, the walking tour, the audio driving tour. Is that going to be updated? So right now we are, of course, dealing specifically with historic information. So, I mean, as more research is done, new information can come to light. Uh, the driving tour is probably the most, if you will, living document of the three. It would be more easily updated. We will have a transcript available on uh, wherever we post it, and um, that can easily be updated, and we can update sections as needed. Right now, we have a volunteer who is offered to do all of the recording, so it will also depend on their time. The walking tour, as we've discussed, there seems to be sort of a... Um, 25 year to 10 year updating process. Um, but we will offer that. Um, we, we are hoping to sell it for a donation as it the current model from the version from 2012 edition, excuse me. Uh, but we will also offer free PDF of that online. So I think as new information comes to light, it, it could definitely be updated. Um, I mean, just since we started this process for that probably about a year or so ago, we have learned so much because it seems everyone in town has some kind of anecdote or story about West Street and you just have to find them for them to tell it to you. And so it can take some time to track them down. And we, and most likely once we publish this, those people will come out of the woodwork and say, oh, my grandmother lived at such and such or my aunt or my best friend or something along those lines. So yes, we will try to keep up with it. Of course, um, historical commissions change. We get new members, people rotate off. But I think that is a goal for the future. Thank you. Yeah, I got caught up in reading the uh, walking tour. And I lost my Saturday morning. Just it was in, very, very interesting. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I think it's excellent. I'm glad that this is being documented. Thank you. Um, just a question on your your funding figures. Are they current? Do you have you double checked that they're current figures? Or I know you've been working on this for a couple of years. So um, our most recent um, quotes, the one for the signs, I think dates back to September twenty twenty two, and the one for the booklet, I think that's within the past six months. Okay. So as we know. Inflation has been on the rise within that time frame, and that um, materials have been hard to come by in some cases. So we did uh, pad our numbers a little bit based on what we were given to take that into account that most likely when we go to fabrication or publication, the numbers could be higher. One, one thought with the sound, the town's um, sign bylaws that are fairly recent, um, it'd be good to check with the building inspector department if you haven't had a chance to already, just to make sure that um, where you want to put the signs is that the signs meet the bylaws and the location mm -hmm. meets the bylaws. Um, but so maybe go ahead. We went before the planning board at the beginning of December and were approved at their meeting, and we also got approval from the DPW director. And it is on our timeline to go to the building commissioner and the select board. Uh, this deadline came up first, so we went for it, but definitely prior to the May 4th meeting, should you vote to uh, send this to town meeting for, then we will work on getting those approvals. Thank you. Andy? <clears throat> Oops, you're muted, Andy. Wish I had a dollar for every time somebody said that to me. <laughs> um, thank you for coming before the committee. Um, I really enjoyed your proposal. Uh, I think the mock-up for the signs look really good. Um, is there any chance uh, that, uh, uh, are you planning to re-edit the, the signs, the, uh, the graphics on the signs, or do you think they'll pretty much look the way you presented them in your proposal today, tonight. As far as I know, those are finalized. We just need to do the Spanish language side. Uh, we did use our very modest budget of $300 that we get annually from the town to pay the graphic designer to do those. Uh, 
I mean, if you have a suggestion for something else, we could definitely consider it. But I think at this point, those are finalized. I thought you'd never ask. Um, do you have those um, those uh, QRL codes on the signs where people can get to the walking tour or the driving tour automatically? Yes, right. so those will be added right now. There's a square that's empty waiting for them because we're okay. trying to determine if we need to build our own website to host those things or if we can host them from our page on the town website. Uh, in terms of the content of the signs, um, it's pretty standard history. You know, it's very English settler focused. Um, I would like a fifth sign uh, about the prehistory of Hadley and a little more than one sentence about the native peoples who lived here for hundreds, if not thousands of years before. Um, so, so I would encourage you to ask for more money to put up under the sun <laughs> um, to cover that history. Uh, also, you know, there's a, there's a new history which is the history of the common people, uh, uh, women, people of color, Native Americans. Um, and that's pretty interesting. That's the new history. Um, and I would, I, I don't wanna ask you to redo the signs. I'm sure you fought like crazy deciding on the wording, but I would encourage you to consider adding more of that in sort of new, people's history. Um, uh, I think people find that more interesting these days. Um, but other than that, I think they're really terrific projects. Um, uh, and the more people know about Hadley history, the more they'd be willing to support its preservation. Thank you. I, I'm not opposed to a fifth sign. Um, when we started this project many years ago, now it feels like we had this idea of a whole trail of signs throughout the whole town. And when we, I think we even came to the CPA and we're like, this is our idea. And they were like, you should scale that back. So we did scale it back um, to this. Uh, I love the idea. Um, I believe the term you're looking for is history from below has been given to the idea of not just telling the stories of uh, white men. Uh, I guess my question would be, where would we put the sign? And um, we do have more information in the walking tour and especially in the driving tour. We met with a consultant about uh, the native history of the area and to make sure that we were pronouncing words correctly when the time comes to record it. And I think as we were talking about towards Edwin's question that this is an ongoing project and I would love to see more signs down the road. I would love to see more research done this is just the beginning of what I think can be more and to have more historical information that's out there for the public to take in and that they don't have to do that research themselves. Because I'm pretty sure you're gonna get this question at town meeting. So that's I'll, great. I'll be, I'll be yeah. What was that Mark? I was just saying that's great. I was, I was glad to hear that she wants to do more and hopes to do more. This is great. Thank you. So uh, one other funding question. Um, you show that, well, the total request, it looks like was 15,000 and the historical commission has put in 300. Um, we often see when it's a town committee, not always, but see that actual committee put in a little more Percentage wise, is there any funds from the historic commission or is that really not an option? So, as I previously mentioned, from the town, we get $300 in our annual budget. Okay. Uh, okay. We did request 600 this year, um, but in the past, when we attempted to raise our budget numbers, they were denied. Okay. So, I don't <clears throat> foresee that happening. I, I would love to have more funding. Um, Unfortunately, not to speak ill of anyone in the past, but 
we typically we originally had more funding when I first joined the commission, but because it was never used, the town cut us back. And now that we have a very active commission and want to do things, that the money is unfortunately not there from the town to support those projects. So we did put in our $300 from last year. We are planning on putting in our $300 from this year. We had a commission member who graciously donated 300 of their own dollars for this pro for one of the projects. And I mean, if, if we had more money to give to it, we definitely would because we want to make this happen. Okay. Well, Denise and Diane and Courtney it's, and the rest of your committee or commission, it's obvious you've spent a lot of time on this and it is, it is, I didn't read through all hundred and whatever pages, <laughs> but the parts I did read, I really enjoyed. So um, it's, it's a nice getting, it's, you know, trying to get people to learn in entertaining ways. And it's nice that you've got several different ways because people, some people like to listen, some people like to read and, you know, the signs will be a nice reminder. Um, and hopefully get people to say, want to learn more. So that's, that's nice. Any other comments or questions? Well, I would just add on to that, that I'm sorry to hear that the town does not financially support your efforts, uh, although it seems clear that your commission is rich with uh, volunteer passion and spirit. Thank you. Well, the, the town will support you by voting to give you CPA money to spend for your project. Yeah. Fingers crossed. All right, any other questions or comments? Mm -hmm. Um, I can't see everyone, so if I don't call on you, speak up, because um, then I'll, I'll see you, but good. All right, well, thank you very much um, for your presentation, and we'll see you in two weeks. Thank you very much. All right. So our fourth application is the Russell School, um, and we've got quite a bit of information on that as well, um, and we've got... Dan and Courtney, and maybe I'm not sure if there's someone else here for that as well. Um, but if you'd like to, whoever's going to present, if you'd like to start, and again, I can, I'm more than glad to share screens if you'd like me to. Thank you. Um, Mary, if you could put up the uh, survey results, uh, that's the first thing we're going to touch upon. Okay. Just have to let this unzip. Okay. <laughs> um, um, <clears throat> so my name is Courtney Meyer. I'm the chair of the Russell School Committee. Um, so in the fall, our committee put together a community survey, which was distributed via posters and local businesses and municipal buildings, the November 1st water bill, highly specific social media groups, and through the efforts of community members sharing their survey with their network. Um, we also held a forum in November at the Senior Center to help inform residents about the building. In all, we received 562 responses for the survey. You'll see in the Russell School survey analysis that 73% of respondents believe that it's important to preserve the Russell School, 50% of whom say it's very important and 23% of whom say it's somewhat important. Um, you'll see the two most popular responses were to stabilize the building and to rehab it for uh, town or community use. Um, as a result, the Russell School Committee would like to stabilize the building as soon as possible to help prevent further deterioration. We're applying for CPA funds to stabilize the structure and would like your approval so we can get it on uh, the town warrant for spring. Uh, so the town needs space for offices, Parks and Rec would like a more permanent setting for the department, and Hopkins also needs more classroom and administrative space, and a dedicated performance space for school and or community use. Um, due to the, um, the location, the convenient location between Town Hall and Hopkins School, and it already being owned by the town, the rest of the school can fulfill those needs. Um, so before we move on to uh, the state of the building and stabilization numbers, does anybody have questions? No. Dan, if you want to take it away. Okay, I'm unmuted. Okay. <laughs> Here are you. 
Um, first of all, I'd like to thank the CPA for hearing us tonight. Um, we have um, we have worked, uh, you know, over the past few months to get a bunch of these numbers together um, from uh, the past reports that CPA has paid for, and uh, you know, between then and now. Uh, the town has certainly overcome some huge hurdles. Uh, now we have new spaces to work in and work from. And um, uh, now that we do have that, we, you know, we can spend some time to pay attention to this very important issue. Um, you know, the, the, uh, the money that we're asking for is a drop in the bucket compared to what the property is actually worth. Um, this is a really strong building, um, as um, I've been through there a few times. Most recently, um, you know, it 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 really deserves to uh, to be saved. Um, and the reason that we we're asking for so much money um, right away is that it you know the time has come where these maintenance issues have have been uh, put put aside, put off. Um, decisively and strategically so that we could build these new buildings. And, um, you know, now that, now that they're built, we have time to, to work on this stuff, but it, it, it's, it's, um, it's to the point where it's really do or die for this building. Um, the, 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 the slate roof is 128 years old and it's been repaired a few times, but the majority of it's been there for that long. And, um, a slate roof is, is certainly uh, 75 to 100 year life expectancy, but that was 128 years ago. Um, so, um, you know, it's time to not just do the maintenance, but really take it apart, put it back together, uh, as well as uh, the, uh, the pointing of the brickwork and the, uh, the granite stones, uh, all of that uh, has been deferred maintenance. Uh, but now the time has come to actually do the maintenance. Uh, in the past, uh, we have captured CPA money, not this particular committee, uh, but the building committee. Um, and I think BPW probably going farther back, I forget who, who captured some CPA money to do uh, chimney repairs, roofing repairs. The most recent money that was approved, the, the uh, I think it was $8,000 for, uh, for roof repair certainly was not enough to do what was necessary to repair the roof. And so that money was returned to CPA and um, with the understanding that we really need to have some serious dollars put into this project so that the building stands for the future generations of this town. Um, this is not about us or our committee. This is about the whole town, the whole community, not just Hadley. The, hundred thousand cars go by that building every day and see it and you know we really need to have uh you know pay this building a little bit of respect so uh enough about that uh we have uh, the numbers broken down a little bit um the projects would include uh the unstable grades and retaining walls uh the battered granite uh, repair, uh, the, the repointing of the brickwork or pointing of the brickwork and the slate roof. Um, all of that adds up uh, to our estimates to 1,236,000. Um, going back to some of these old reports, uh, that seems to be uh, more than enough to get these projects done and most likely would be returning some of the CPA money so that we could realign and, and plan for the next phase of stabilization efforts. Uh, the building certainly needs more than just a roof and some pointing. Um, it's, you know, it's gonna need heat, it's gonna need windows. Um, I expect that um, you know, above and beyond CPA that we should be able to get some fundraising going. Once this project starts, people are gonna see that this, you know, this building is finally getting what it deserves. And I think that we could probably raise some more money and the, the taxpayers would be willing to chip in a little bit. Um, recently, uh, I just finished my um, continuing education to 
uh, keep my builder's license. And I had an opportunity to speak with uh, one of the instructors there actually sits on Mass Historic. And um, when I brought this particular project to his attention, I asked him if there are, are ways that we could uh, work together. Is there some, in some capacity, could he help us out? And he looked at what we had here and he said, yeah, slate roof. He said, here's one way that I can help. I can recommend that you can go with a synthetic slate roof and you know cut your cost on that particular item quite a bit. And it certainly would fall within uh, the parameters that a historic preservation restriction would require. Um, it is going to look like the old slate roof, but it's going to have the same, you know, life expectancy and, uh, you know, just be cheaper uh, by probably one third is what he said. So there, you know, there's more ways that we can, you know, more ways to skin a cat. Uh, we certainly, um, you know, look forward to this project going forward. We think it's going to be ins inspiration to not only the town, but the surrounding towns to see this building uh, being refurbished. Um, we, we understand that there is some opposition and what are you going to use it for? And what, you know, it's going to cost so much money. We're a town with an annual budget of around 20 million each year. This is a million. And we spend more than 20 million on the three new buildings. You know, a million to keep this one standing, even if we don't use it the first year or two and need to do more work to it. It's just, you know, minuscule compared to what the property is actually worth. It's, you know, in my opinion, it's one of the most beautiful properties in the, in the Pioneer Valley. And, you know, you, you know, with that being said, like I said, you, you, you certainly could, um, you know, inspire more than just our own, our own townspeople. Um, I'm going to stop for a minute and ask if there's any questions that I may be able to answer. What's the life going to be on a synthetic slate roof? Is it, are we going to be able to get another 128 years out of it? Uh, that's something I haven't investigated. I just got that information the other day. So I haven't really looked into it. Mm -hmm. um, those, you know, those are certainly questions that we can, um, you know, once we put an RFP out there, we can get some numbers back and find out exactly what, what that entails. Edwin, in a hundred years, we'll let you know. <laughs> okay, good. You promise? I promise, yes. Okay, good. <clears throat> Hey Dan, Andy, Andy Klopacki here. Hi Andy. How's it going? It's going well, how are you? Oops, you're muted, Andy. Oh. Oh, you muted it. Andy, you just muted yourself. No, no, no you're not. Oh, now you are. <laughs> No, you muted, Andy. Andy, do you down in the lower left-hand corner the little mute button? Can you, as the leader, unmute him? I'm. Oh, I, I don't, don't think I can. I think no. You can. can you can I mute can people, mute but you can't unmute them. Right. I can. <laughs> Um, whoops, I wonder if he's coming back on. He probably is. Let's see. Nope, he's still there. Hey. There I think that's better. Oops. Oh, now it's on again. There you <laughs> go. Yes, yes. All right, so it seems like my power cord is somehow tied into the microphone here that I have to hold it in a particular position for it to have. I am very familiar with Zoom and the mute button. Thanks for all the input. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> Unfortunately, this computer, which I don't use all the time, apparently has a little bit of a health problem. So we'll have to look. Anyway, uh, Dan, we spent, uh, you know, as you, you know, you know, we spent, uh, I don't know, six years together on the uh, building committee and this topic came up over and over again. Uh, and if, if my recollection is correct, that $8,000 was set aside to help fix the flat roof uh, that the DPW eventually found some money and did it within their own budget. So I was glad to see that uh, that money that had been sitting there since 2016 was came back. So uh, 
it, uh, it, it, but I know that that building has been an, uh, um, an area of valid and concern. It's a great uh, place along Route 9, uh, a, a landmark building, if I'm using the, uh, the term correctly. But one of the questions I'm sure that you've heard and will continue to come up with is, uh, if we're gonna spend $1.2 million on it, what will be the um, expenditure overall? Because I'm sure that, you know, it's, it's a, I understand this is stabilization money to help uh, keep further erosion in the, uh, um, in the foundation uh, and, and the like, but people are gonna wanna know what the, the, the whole ticket is. That's one question that will definitely be faced on town meeting floor. Are we talking 10 million, 15 million, 20 million to, uh, to renovate the building? Uh, and also, as you know, with the prices being what they are, um, have we adequately planned for uh, building costs? As you know, with your um, CSL, uh, people aren't holding prices more than 60 days nowadays because of the rapid inflation on, on building prices. So uh, two factors that will definitely be um, probably have to come up and be addressed at, um, at town meeting. Okay, well, certainly um, um, when it comes to the future costs of bringing different areas of the building up to usable code, um, we certainly will be uh, using uh, the IEBC, uh, the existing building code. And certainly with the um, age of the building and the type of construction that it is, it sort of limits us to the action, the, the amount of work that we can actually do on the inside. So, you know, we certainly can't change uh, the lateral loads, the vertical loads. We can't change the loading of the building by very much. So we can't be tearing walls down and putting them up in different areas. They have to pretty much stay the same. So you can't really change a lot inside the building. You're not gonna spend a lot of money in there changing uh, or remodeling the inside. Of course, you know, by uh, certainly historic commission standards, we would want to leave most of that the same anyway. Um, one thing that I can read straight out of the old Mohawk uh, is this this particular passage, uh, quote, maintaining the use of an existing structure within its site significantly lessens its carbon footprint and the material waste, energy, and cost required to replace or demolish it. And that's common sense. So, you know, what you have is, you know, when, you, when you're considering uh, the things like, you know, lead building and stuff like this, you know, we may not be able to approach it from that particular, you know, to, to try to capture any kind of lead certification. But we certainly are starting with an already built structure and it's got a lot of free light. Um, even the, the Gazette article that was written uh, when the building was first opened uh, would explain how the light would spill over the student's shoulder to hit the page. And there's just so much free light in there. Um, it's, you know, a massive thermal mass. Um, if, when, when indeed you do design a heating plant for it, um, it's going to be pretty uh, energy efficient, I think, with that amount of thermal mass. The things that will cost uh, will be... Um, you know, the new codes require, if it's going to be a public building, it's going to need an elevator because you need to access those upper floors. You need to have accessibility. So, you know, in the future, that's something that CPA won't be able to provide us with as money for an elevator. So that would be considerable cost. You know, how much will it be uh, three or four, five years from now when we actually get to that part of the project? We don't know. But we won't have that opportunity if we don't stabilize the building now. Um, what we're asking is simply from a, a you know, uh, historical landmark perspective, um, part of our community, part of our town. Um, one thing is for sure, um, anybody, anybody I talk to, you know, that building was there before they were born. And who are we to take it down? I mean, we really should be paying attention to our history, 
and you know this is worthy of CPA dollars. It's worthy of community support. Um, the community has has dictated that through the survey. Um, you know what the building could be used for. It, you know the possibilities are endless. What it's going to cost? Well, there's certainly some definitive numbers on that. We just don't have them. Um, we know what it costs for roofing. We, we can probably figure out pretty quick what it's going to cost to bring the windows up to modern code. Um, but the, uh, the the future cost of, of uh, renovating a building, certainly we're going to have to redo the steps. The rise and run is way off compared to modern specs, but we could certainly fix that with a few days work. Um, there are many more projects that need to be done. Again, the 1.236 million we're asking for is probably gonna be way more than what we need to stabilize. We'll have to bring some money back, not complete one or two of those projects and realign our uh, objectives to more closely to what is needed in the more immediate future to stabilize the building. There was that DRA report you included, which I did not understand at all. But um, was there a total on that at the time? I know that's dated now, but was there a total? Um, the total provided? on that was more like, uh, I think it was between 16 and 17 million. Now, the way that was written, each one of the projects was considered a one-off project. So if you were doing the roof, so that all the soft costs were incorporated into that one project. We're gonna do the pointing of the brick all the soft costs and insurance and whatnot is incorporated into that project. And if you're gonna do the, the pointing of the masonry or say the unstable grades, all of the soft, it was considered a one-off project. So when you added all those one-off projects up with all of those soft costs separated, yeah, you're gonna come up with tens of millions of dollars, but that's not what we're doing here. We wanna you know, do a little bit of stabilization you know, some planning and then, you know, stop there, replan and figure out. It. So I think, you know, once we stabilize this building, it's going to be very attractive to the people who are crammed into town hall and they're going to need space and they're going to figure out pretty quick how to put the, you know, get the next step rolling. It's, I mean, the 1.2 is a big ask for CPA. Um, you know, we, we aren't, I don't think there are funds in CPA to do, you know, this full scope of this building, even looking down the road or borrowing. So it's it's important that you know there be there be some other funding sources. Um, it's you know. Um, now, one couple questions. Well, I should ask other people. What other questions do people have? Um, and speak up if I'm not calling on you, because again, I'm not seeing everyone at once. Um, I do feel it's important to preserve it. As you say, if you don't do it now, it's really at the end of its life. Um, I share Andy's, you know, what is the end result, but I don't know if we know. And if we don't do this, we don't need to ask that question because it's going to fall in on itself sooner than later. If we do this, then maybe it becomes a saleable asset that we could get a developer to, to do it. Um, but again, if we don't, we're going to, we're going to be paying more to have it safely taken down. So it's not a hazard. So, I mean, it already has fences around it. So. Those are my thoughts, but I'll save those for in two weeks. Yeah, certainly, um, you know, it, it can be more and more hazard if the, hazardous if the work isn't done. Um, the fact remains is it's, a, it's, it's, in, it's in good shape. And if we didn't do anything to it, uh, it would stand there for a really long time before it starts to really come apart and fall over. Um, the... the it's a, it's a beautiful building with no broken out windows and no graffiti all over it. So people have a strange kind of respect for it. And uh, it's certainly uh, worth saving. And I, I think, again, you know, how they put it, it's a low carbon footprint to leave it there. And 
it certainly is a um, would be a way a wait in my opinion to to put uh, five to seven hundred thousand dollars into removing it and then have nothing there. It is a beautiful. Oh, go ahead, Andy. Um, okay, well, I want to start by thanking you for uh, all your work in trying to preserve this beautiful and historic building, especially you, Dan. You have been this building's champion since as long as I can remember. And um, uh, it's nice to see your work come to fruition at last. I think there'll be a lot of support uh, for this project. Um, uh, I think one of the lessons is that, you know, we should have done this five years ago. <laughs> it would have cost a lot less. Uh, 25 and if years we, ago was more And like if it. we I put it off for another five years, it's going to cost a lot more. So there is no time like the present. Um, so I think that's one argument you could definitely you could definitely make. Um, it's the only building on Route Nine that will still be here a hundred years from now. Um, it's really our uh, legacy uh, and gift to the future. Um, every everything else will be gone except that building if we if we take care of it. Um, I would encourage you after you get this uh, emergency stabilization money to come back to us to make a current updated plan for the future use of the building. Uh, uh, building on the architectural studies of the past to get current numbers, um, to get uh, the most efficient heating system, uh, what it needs for uh, media, electricity, everything. Um, uh, multi-year, you know, the whole works. So everybody knows what the end goal is. Um, it's a lot easier to get people support. I realize you need this money now uh, to save the building. Um, there's three options for an old building. You can preserve it, you can sell it, you can tear it down, right? And we have sold one, we have torn one down, and it's time to save the most important one. <laughs> Um, which is this school. So I think that's another good argument um, you could make. Uh, my question is, and I don't know if you have an answer to this, um, why haven't any of the restoration projects for this building gone ahead from the past? Is there someone or something that is slow walking these projects or stonewalling them? or uh, some sort of secret opposition that is defying the will of town meeting who's voted to preserve this building in the past? What's going on? Yeah, I don't think that, you know, there's certainly opposition um, from, you know, the, the certain amount of people, certainly not just one, there's, there's a bunch of people that uh, they have no value. There's no value for them in in, in historic preservation, and I, you know, I, you know, I I don't really try to understand that so much. Um, has there been a, a concerted effort to keep this off of town meeting floor? Not necessarily. We've captured you know the the uh, eight thousand dollars for the roofing in recent history and some other uh, you know certainly the studies that that CPA has paid for to find out what to do with the building. And each time it comes up, people vote for it. Um, you know, has, you know, it's, it, it's been, you've been avoiding putting money into the building because it's been, you know, the North Star was in there, it was leased out. And you really can't do this type of, this magnitude of work when it's occupied. And that's why, I mean, I have a, you know, uh, you know one of our things from the uh, building committee uh, you know, it, it specifically states the building needs to be empty. It says com the committee's belief that this structure defines our town and should be kept for future generations. Since it's such an iconic structure in our downtown, our belief is that there is a true use for this structure as a town owned building. In order for this process to happen, we must vacate the building and start evaluating the structure for this town use. 
The structure must be vacant for this to begin. Now, this is from the Municipal Buildings Committee several years ago before when the North Star was in there. So if that happened, we got our liability is, you know, now that it's not occupied, it might cost more to insure that empty building, but at least there's no huge liability hanging out there where, you know, the steps are crooked, there's no railings in proper places. And so that needed to be taken care of. Then we needed to build new buildings and we did that. And, you know, then COVID hit and we couldn't use one of our new buildings. You know, it, the, a bunch of stuff happened. So this, you know, this can got kicked down the road and justifiably so. I mean, we had important things to spend money on. And, you know, to have the new senior center and uh, now we have, you know, select board meetings are there and there's so many meetings there. And, you know, we have the new library and so many meetings happen there and gatherings and the new fire station up north and so much is going on up there and boy do we have room to breathe now uh and you know now that we have room to breathe it's time to you know, pay attention to this building and the time has come you know the, the the roof is now actively leaking near the chimney uh when i was up there uh my my most recent visit there was about a week and a half ago uh, to do uh, a major photography shoot, which you'd be surprised when it actually comes public. It's really nice. But there was, you know, a couple of gallons of water on that attic floor. Supposedly right where next to a chimney we had just fixed. So, you know, we need to get to that. You know, water damage happens over an amount of time. And if we don't nip it in the bud right away, it's going to cause interior damage. That is, you know, at this point, there's not a squeak anywhere in the in either floor, first or second floor. That building is so solid. Um, it's a real. It'd be a real waste to have the town not do anything about it. I mean, it's just it's such a solid and usable building. And in terms of the stonewalling comment, Andy, um, I am relatively new to the area. I've been here for about five years. Um, and I will talk to anybody who will talk to me about the Russell School. Um, and I've also been watching old select board meetings from 10, 15 years ago. And the same conversations were happening then. Um, it was very much, um, we need to hear from the community about what needs to happen with this building. But there were no surveys put out. Uh, it was never at town meeting. Um, and so now that we have this official committee um, of a lot of hardworking individuals, <clears throat> we were able to do the survey that people have been talking about for 10 to 15 years. So now we have we have the information. So there's uh, fewer excuses now. Well, this, this, this brings me to my one suggestion for changes in your proposal, which is who gets the money? In the proposal, I believe the proposal says that the select board gets the money to do the emergency repairs. And that's all well and good. But I would suggest that your committee get the money and that that way you stay responsible for the progress of the work and not turn it over to some other group, even if they're our elected officials. So that was my one suggestion about changes for your proposal. Keep keep control of the money yourself. Yeah, it's a good point. Well, so we certainly so would be. Think about it. Yeah, we would be very responsible. Um, you know, it's I I'd hate to go forward with a huge project and not include <laughs> some some uh, control or at least oversight. From the town it's their building you know it's you know it's not it's not our committee's building this belongs to the whole town and you know above and beyond that i have a lot of respect for the surrounding towns as well and i you know i, I would hate to see our you know town with you know a model community um the lowest tax rate around uh triple a bond rating what's the use of all those great things if you can't make this you know <laughs> preserve this beautiful historic building um you know i agree with you andy um uh, you know i 
but I, you know, I'd want at least, you know, either our committee or the municipal building committee or someone to have a, a representative or a delegate from either DPW or select board or somewhere to, you know, be on the committee as well. So far we have a, uh, a liaison from the select board, uh, but we haven't seen that liaison at one of our meetings since the very first inception of the whole committee. Um, so we, you know, we're looking forward to a little more cooperation from town. Yeah, well, I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure this uh, project would qualify for an OPM anyway, and would have to go through that that whole course. Um, there's uh, 1. there's one point five million. That's when you required an OPM. But the town may still want one just to yeah, make I it. Would, I, I highly recommend that yeah. an OPM be, a, you know, be hired for the, even though it doesn't, it's not required till 1.5 million. I would highly recommend that the town hire a proper OPM and, you know, it would be from someone from Old Mohawk or one of the other historic restoration companies. And is that figure in your budget of the 1.236? It certainly be? is. is the, okay. You know, this is, those, those four numbers were pulled out of the, of the um, DRA report updated for, uh, you know, cost escalation and whatnot. But though all four of those numbers were collected with the soft costs. So we have soft costs for more than just this project. And who updated the figures? I was just curious. Uh, hmm. Between Andy and I, uh, we put together the, the, you know, and escalated the numbers. Um, you know, I, I, we had Andy and I, came, or uh, Alan, I'm sorry, Alan and I put it together. Um, and we, we came up with different numbers, uh, but they were pretty close. Um, if I look back at my notes. I'm just gonna interject for anyone else not familiar with the construction process. When we were just talking about OPM, that's an owner's project manager. So you have a professional firm that knows how to handle contracts and construction and all the intricacies that go along with that instead of a uh, ad hoc volunteer group of people who have other jobs nine to five. Correct. Thank you, Mark, we appreciate it. Yes, and, it, and also apparently the, uh, the minimum for that has gone up since the last time we I, I looked into that. So we're up to one and a half million now. Um, I think I get another check, but I just, um, I just updated that recently. I was lucky enough to wander by when Dan was there a week and a half ago. And when I saw somebody in the building, I asked if I could wander around and he nicely showed me around and it's been a while since I've been inside um, Russell School. And it is the light, just, it was a sunny day and the light filled rooms were just, um, just gorgeous. And the views were gorgeous too. You can see Mount Holyoke, you can see the Congregational Church and Town Hall. You can see, you know, to each direction, there's a nice view. and. You can see Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah, you can see Dunkin' Donuts. Dan and Courtney, I wanted to make sure too, any any historic resources that use that are rehabilitated using um, CPA funds have to have to follow the Secretary of Interior's standards for rehabilitation. And I just wanted to make sure you read through those and are yep. aware of those. Um, yep, I have those here as well. Because they do want you to use replace with like material as much yep. certainly in form and function and color and hopefully same type if possible and to save yep. the distinctive features and um, limit some of the ways you can work on the buildings. Um, so I'm glad you've read through those because that's important. The other thing is I noticed you had as a contact, you did have Carolyn Brennan um, and Gary Berg, which are two town employees. So, I mean, I think a project like this, it's good to have a town employee, but I'm wondering when, you know, in terms of being able to take your application and put it out for bid, I, I'd like to have Carolyn um, Brennan take a look at it if she hasn't thoroughly looked at it and just see, is this is this bid ready? Because I think that that's some of the, some of the holdups in the past too have been projects that you know, we're good ideas and had a lot of information, but is it really bid ready to be able to go out to bid and um, so that they're not trying to trying to work with you after the, you know, after the fact. And I, I don't know how many discussions you've had with um, her, or Jennifer James about, um, you know, the procurement process. 
Correct. Yes. I'm, you know, that that's one of uh, the biggest concerns Gary Berg had was he, you know, he wants to see some kind of plan here. He doesn't want to just, you know, throw a roof on the place and, you know, then watch the bell tower fall over was his quote. Um, yes, this is the, a, a big concern and it should be a big concern. Um, the bid specs need to be drawn up formally and and uh, approved by, uh, you know, the town before we can put this out. So, um, and it answers to, um, yes, Andy's question. It does say that uh, public building contract that is estimated to be 1.5 million or more, your jurisdiction must contract qualified OEM. So that's the number on that. Uh, but under that, since, I mean, we, it doesn't meet that. We're asking for 1.236. You know, we could certainly, we could certainly just go out uh, to bid just as is and see if old, old Mohawk bites at it and they could be, you know, the design build contractor right there. But I think, you know, it is a, it is a big project for the town and for, you know, certainly the CPA, but it, it also puts a burden perhaps on the procurement if not to have an OPM. Correct. Um, which they may or may not have time for. Um, yeah. But I do, you know, again, I, you know, I, in the next two weeks, I'd like to get some feedback from Carolyn Brennan too on, on her thoughts for, um, you know, the, the procurement part of it, um, just because mm -hmm. we've, we've seen some other projects kind of need more information and then it's hard to get. And, and um, I, I'd like her feedback on it too. And especially when she's listed as a contact there. Um, but I don't know if you, you know, how best to do that. If you've had conversations with her and Jennifer or, um, not as much, and um, certainly, um, I I believe it was Alan who had uh, advised us to put put Carolyn and Gary as contacts. So that's why their na names are there. Um, you know, will that you know will that throw a monkey wrench in? I don't think so. Um, and if it does, uh, I'd be surprised and caught off guard. Um, we are one town. We're working in the same direction. To, you know, right? if they're if they're working for this town, they're working for what the town wants, which is save the building. So I don't think we'd have too much too much of an issue there. I know that they're a little stretched at town hall. Um, uh, the the verbiage I've heard said was that you know they don't have the bandwidth there to handle these projects. And you know, as as much as I sympathize with them, it is their job, and I think you know they can you know. This is one that they can certainly handle. Um, it's not out of the realm of possibility for them to contract a roofer and a mason. It's, you know, I, I don't have the expertise to be able to look at the report and say, is this giving them what they need to do up the bid? So right. that's why, you know, I, I'd like to get their feedback on it and um, I can ask in the next two weeks. Um, okay, well, I'll approach them as well. Thank you. Okay. And uh, Mary? Yeah. One other thing I wanted to ask, um, sometimes with large projects or large contracts, we do a, uh, an after agreement. Um, once the town approves the funding, um, the applicant and the CPA committee come together to work out the details. Um, uh, the people on our committee think that this project should have a, uh, uh that that kind of an uh, agreement or should we you know let it go i guess one of my concerns is that if we spend the money to stabilize the building and then a select board comes along and decides to sell the building um uh that's not so good so those kind of contingencies are worked out in the after agreement So I don't know, Mary. But so I, you know, I wonder. I mean, with when it's not town-owned building, I know we we've talked about um, there being restrictions on sailing or or also reimbursing the CPA fund if if the building is sold, so that you know the town's money goes back into the town. When it's a town-owned building, I'm not quite sure. I, you know, um, 
can we can we restrict the town from selling it? Is that you know I I don't know, um, and I don't know you know if it's sold should we does the money go back into CPA um, when it is still town money? Again, I'm I'm not, just not sure, um, but it's maybe well, we certainly can the town can't sell it. the building without the townspeople's permission. They uh, the, uh, exactly. you know a sale would have to go through town meeting. So that would take a lot longer um, right. than, um, you know, putting a roof on it. The judge, you know, it seems what happened with North Adley Village Hall. Um, you know, it actually cost us money to get rid of that building. The town was sued because they tried to sell it. You know, it's one of the things that was hard to read in the report was it kept saying over and over, these problems were caused from lack of maintenance. And, um, you know, departments are stretched and, you know, many places to put time and effort, but hopefully if money is put into it, it, you know, it can be maintained um, and looking into the future because that I saw that identified a few times as one of the, one of the issues, but well, it was the municipal nice building committee has um, uh, met recently and maintenance to the new buildings as, as well as uh, you know, CPA projects for maintenance to the old buildings mm -hmm. has come up on our agenda. And I think it'll it'll be a hot item uh, at our very next meeting as the Municipal Building Committee looks at maintenance budgets. We're asking, uh, I believe, for $200,000 to be put in the budget to maintain our buildings. And we've never had that before. And, you know, as Andy Klopacki can tell you, we, you know, we've asked for this before. Um, it needs to be done. Even if it's just a, you know, if we if we use it till it's used up, or we replenish it up to the two hundred thousand dollar mark each year, um, there there needs to be a, a, a budget that is not necessarily level funded to take care of building needs as they come up, uh, be it power washing or painting or whatnot. Um, you know, it's it's an issue. Um, Gary is our only maintenance, you know, dedicated maintenance person, and he he doesn't have the time to do all these things by himself. We need a budget, and you know, probably a staff, even if it's one person, uh, could you know, one person can do quite a lot of maintenance uh, to all of our buildings in a single year. Um, we certainly could use up a budget like that. Um, you know, within a year or two, uh, adjust normal maintenance things. And why that hasn't been, you know, put into place years ago. Um, I mean, that's one of the reasons I joined the Municipal Building Committee is to see if we can get the town a little more attentive to its most valuable asset, its real estate. Um, these things need to be taken care of. Uh, maintenance has been an issue. You know, these are growing pains. We put up new buildings. We still don't have dedicated maintenance budgets. We've only been in there for a couple of years. We don't know what it's gonna cost really quite yet, but we're getting a handle on what it's taken. So um, uh, point taken about maintenance. Thank you. Yeah, I'll, I'll echo what Dan said there that we used to build the committee back as early as 2014 when it was first uh, established. I'd been recommending to um, the town select board and um, finance also um, the treasurer and the um yeah. whoops you gotta hold your cord down andy yeah hold your cord you got you're still muted you're still muted it's the little button on the left hand corner there you go <laughs> thanks you Mary. Arthur to can you hear me now yes yes we can thank you no. Oh, now we can't. Now we can't. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. All right. If I hold the thing, it, the cord in the right position, I can talk. Very good. <laughs> so uh, anyway, echoing that sentiment that is uh, going back to 2014, the, the building committee had recommended to the town that they establish a um, uh, maintenance budget and then take it out of the various departments that it was in at the time. Park and Rec had a, uh, a maintenance budget. The library had a maintenance budget. The uh, public safety complex had it. They've, they've gotten to that point. Now, certainly the, the funding needs to increase, but you know, a lot of that we're talking about uh, town finance 
uh, support of the building. I want to bring us back to, uh, if we can, back to the uh, proposal here, uh, because yes, uh, Mary brings up a valid point, Dan, this that the group will have to answer, how are we going to pay to maintain the building? As we know, it's usually a function of age and size uh, and condition, uh, and um, as well as other factors. And, you know, that's a big building, it's kind of old, so it's, its cost per year will be a lot higher than, say, the new senior center. Um, but um, that's, you know, another question you might be facing at town meeting. Yep, certainly, uh, you know, point taken. Um, again, you know, those are um, an, another part of uh, what we're not after quite yet. Again, we're looking for the stabilization money and we want to try to keep that the focus what the building can be used for and how much it's gonna to cost to maintain it, how much it's gonna to cost to fuel it. Um, you know, all those things for us and our particular mission at this point in time is putting the cart before the horse. All we wanna do is stabilize this building so we have options to put fuel into it and this type of things. So we're, you know, we don't wanna, we don't go too far into the future. What we're reacting on is our the results from the survey. The people want to save the building. They think it's important for the future of this town. You know, uh, most likely, I'm not going to be here in 20 years to to argue about it anymore. But the, if the building is here, and the, the you know the kids of today get to use that building for for their select meetings, or you know the the office in the bell tower is a nice town administrator's office. Great, uh, you know that. That's, that's what I'm, I'm after, of course, uh, but we don't have those options if we don't stabilize it. You know, the Hopkins Fields was a big, a big ask also, ask also even more than this. And, but that was like a one-time project. There would be nothing else from the CPA, at least for years. So it was easier to say, yes, that, you know, we, we've got limited funds. That's, that's appropriate use. And this certainly is a wonderful building. It's just, it's, this is just the beginning. So like I said before, I mean, CPA doesn't have the depth of borrowing and funding that this building might need looking, you know, phase two, phase three. So I think, you know, other funding sources, um, hopefully there would be some from a historic, state historical or some, you know, some grant, information or you know something to to help out because we can stabilize it but if we can't afford to do more than that that's hard too um but edwin how would we fund this mary if we if we decided to go forward with uh, dan's uh, request how would we fund this would we borrow money would we pay for it or or what how would we go about doing it um, let me share this screen here. Thank you. And I don't know why this thing keeps coming up. Um, can you see that okay? Yeah. Got it kind of blown up. So right now we have um, our funds and we're going to be taking 50,000 out of the available and putting it into the three buckets. Mm -hmm. um, we'll be talking about potential club clawbacks, but they're there as well. So our potential balance before the new projects is 50,000 open space, 79,000 historic, 258 for housing, our reserve, and then a million eight. So mm -hmm. what could go towards this project um, and the other ones we've talked about is the 79,000 historic. The Lake Warner could come out of this 50,000. Mm -hmm. um, the samplers and the walking tour and this one would be out of the 79 and the million eight and dip a little bit into the 500,000. Um, but let me let me qualify that. Um, so I did I did say if we were to do all four of these projects, um, mm -hmm. we would have 30,500 still in open space. We'd wipe out the historic set aside. We'd have our housing. Um, the reserve would be at 319. However, we do anticipate getting another 200,000 before town meeting. So we would be back up over the 500, but with very little 
general available for projects in the fall. Um, mm -hmm. We'll have another 70,000 coming in in August and another 70,000 in November. Um, that, well, we couldn't use, we could use the August ones for the fall town meeting, but we can't, you know, we'd have to dip into the general reserve if we had some other projects. So if we, we have enough funds to pay for it directly, um, but it'll bring us down to the 607, which, you know, by town meeting would be closer to 807. Um, and we could, I did look at borrowing. Um, We're committed to the Hopkins fields, right. which may be in 2024. Um, right. And I asked Linda, you know, borrow, the town can borrow at rates that an individual perhaps cannot. Um, part of that is the AAA. So, you know, the, we're already committed, whether they do 10 year or 15 year, we're already committed for 10 or 15 years to be paying um, 69,000 or 93,000, depending on the term Lynn, um, just for Hopkins Field. So we have that coming out of our, our um, yearly amount that we have out of say that 550,000. Um, if we were to borrow say another 750,000 for the Russell School um, to give us, as we did the last meeting to give us still options in the future, 10 years would be 186,000 a year, 15 would be 137,000 a year. Um, and, and that's out of that, say 550. So it certainly limits potential projects in the future, which is again, why I'm saying if they want, then if Russell School said the next thing is 3 million or so, you know, CPA funds start getting very small. Um, one, one little thing that was just pointed out um, Linda let me know about when looking at bonding projects, you don't want to have a bond, a project that you're bonding have a time limit, like we did the two years. Mm -hmm. um, she said it shouldn't be a problem with Hopkins because they think by the time they bond that they'll actually be done with the project because they're going to probably do short term bonding first. Um, but with a Russell School, we shouldn't limit it to say two years, um, just if we if we were to decide to bond. She said, you know, it, you could decide in four years if nothing had happened to claw it back. I mean, it doesn't mean you can't claw it back. It just doesn't have a time limit. That's something, or is, that's a restriction that can interfere with the bonding. Um, but that's that's another point. But so, I mean, those are all things we can talk about next week if we, you know, go forward on recommending the project um, is do we want to commit to out of say, you know, we know we get about 300,000 from the town, how much we get from the state can certainly be variable. They, you know, we got a 93% match this year, but they put in an extra 20 million and um, there was still a lot of real estate activity. As the real estate activity has gotten less, there's less of that $50 fee paid at the registry, which is what funds the state portion. And the state may not have extra funds next year that they might put. Um, they put 10 million in last year and 20 million in this year, but whether that continues is certainly an unknown. So if we, you know, if the state went down to zero, this would be 186 out of say 300,000 a year. Um, historically, most of our projects have not used the yearly allotment, which is why we've built up this amount that we have now. Um, but you know, it, it's hard to know what the state could be. Um, if there's a big recession, it might not, it might be very low figures. If there isn't, then it may still stay higher for us. The average town got 38% this year. We got 93%. Mm -hmm. um, usually it's at least 25%. So, um, so Edwin, that's, that's a piece of the puzzle. Um, but there is, if we were willing to bring this figure down to 800,000. Um, we could do it without, um, you know, the, the 607 plus the 200,000 we'll get in the next few months. And that's pretty much known. That's not anything to do with the state. Um, you know, we would still have 800,000 going forward, um, but 258 of that 800,000 is set aside for housing. Um, 
so it, you know, an APR or another one of these projects or the second phase of like Warner or some others come along, you know, we'd like to be sure to have funds. We don't want to need to bond for 200,000. I mean, we, they, they need to be kind of substantial numbers. Um, so it's, yeah. Um, but that's, you know, that's a piece of the puzzle. But it, either way, there's potential either way to pay for this, at least for the first phase. Mary, did you say you wanted to talk about this next meeting? Um, I mean, we're, get, we're getting into two hours, past two hours already. Right, right. Um, yeah. Any other questions for things we'd like Dan or Courtney or their committee to do in the next two weeks other than, you know, reach out to Gary and Carol and especially with them being contacts to get their feedback on, you know, um, what their opinion is on, uh, is this give them the information they need to, to go forward on their end. Um, one thing I wanna do, so so thank you, Dan and Courtney for all your, your efforts here and, and um, it's, yeah, it's, it's, we put a lot into it and I encourage people to take a look if they can of the building. If you haven't seen it in a while, it's really beautiful. And it'll be nice to see the pictures too. Um, yeah, we will be sending out, um, pretty soon we'll have a, a presentation. Um, we've had a photographer go in and do um, a panoramic um, and he's gonna come back and do a few more shots. And so this should be up shortly enough so people can, can, uh, can view the current state on the inside and outside of the building up close uh, without actually having to go over there. Okay, good. Uh, and it, it, you know, if, it, if the committee suggests, we can certainly, you know, I don't mind adding my name to, to, to the list of contacts. You're on it already. Okay, <laughs> or, or anybody else on the committee, I'm, you know, it's up to them, but, um, you know, I, I don't mind uh, doing that. Um, and thank you so much for your time and, and for what you do. I think the CPA has done a, a marvelous job uh, all these years. Um, the money has been allotted fairly and to proper projects. So thank you all so much for very, very much for what you do. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Oh, shucks. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have John Schott here and I, he's patiently waited through the whole meeting. So I, I um, would like him to have a chance to, he's here because, wait, I'm gonna pull this up and I'm conscious of the time, Andy. I just wanna um, not have him have to come back <laughs> and sit through another long meeting. Um, we have several projects that are here in red that are coming due um, by June. And mm -hmm. um, I'll let, um, the clock restoration here is is was to be used by May 22nd when it was originally asked for two years ago. Um, so John, I'll let you, you, he wrote, they wrote a nice letter, but I'll let, since you're here, I'll let you address us on this, please. And yeah. Have your John, oops, now you're muted. Can you try talking? Oops. We still can't hear you. It does not appear that you're muted by Zoom. Oh, now you are muted. Now you're not muted by Zoom. So it must be some other device. Or your power cord. I have found sometimes headsets interfere with the, with the microphone. Yeah. You have to unplug them. John, can you, oops, I, well, John, let me read your, let me read your letter, and then if people have questions, 
Um, we, the Board of Properties of the First Congregational Church of Hadley, request your consideration to extend the funds granted to the church in 2021 from the Town of Hadley and CPA Committee to repair the Seth Thomas clock. After the removal of the clock, it was discovered that the steeple needed structural repairs. Since the clock is located below the steeple, the clock's rods, wires, and other items would be in the way of the structural steeple repairs. Thus, the committee has decided to wait until the steeple repairs are complete to reinstall the clock. The curtain timeline for, the, for repairs is this coming spring. We are hoping that both steeple and clock will be completed no later than this summer. Once the repairs have been completed on the steeple, the clock will be reinstalled to its former location. Currently, no funds have been requested from CPA account. Once the installation has been completed, funding will be requested from the CPA grant. The Seth Thomas Model 15 has been sent out to Peter A. Noon's Antique Clock Restoration in Rhode Island to have all parts refurbished. The restoration, which is a disassembly of all parts, has be, been in progress since 2022. They have completely ultrasonically cleaned all sub-assemblies, wheels, and arbors, burnishing all brass parts in preparation for lacquering, etc. As soon as the steeple project is complete, the installation of the clock will take place. Um, and appreciation of the Board of Properties of the First Congregational Church. Um, John's a member of that. Um, so there, John, are you, you know, he's not sure it'll be done by June. So John, you, you can just do a thumbs up. Is a one-year extension what you'd be requesting? I still can't hear you. So you can, you can do fingers. <laughs> I can see you. <laughs> Can you hear me, John? Yes. Okay. Was would you like a is a one year extension appropriate? Do you think? Yes. Okay. Um, no. Now I do. I do want to just say um, I am a member of the church, and and I believe that Denise Barstow Mans may be also. Um, I'm not positive on that, but. Denise, are you a member of the church? Um, uh, technically, I'm not. Okay, all right. Um, however, like Andy with North Hadley, is there's no financial gain to me or not, um, whether you know the CPA supports the church or not. So um, I I haven't thought it was a conflict of interest, but if anyone did, I'd be I could certainly not vote as well. Um, no, it's fine. Fine with me. Is that fine with everyone? Okay. Um, John, sorry the the microphone isn't working, but your letter was very very helpful. Um, does well, anyone I, want? Go ahead. Yes, I'd like to make a motion that we give a one year extension for the um, clock project. Is a there a one second? Year, one year. I guess it's one year from town meeting, right? Yeah, one year from town meeting. And Mark is second. Yep. Um, any other discussion? So we are voting tonight? Yes. On his extension. Just on his extension. Or do we or do we do that in two weeks? No, let's do it. We're we're already yeah. this far into it. Um and then John doesn't have to <laughs> come back. Um I just want to know when they reinstall it because I want to do a video. Okay. So, so, let, so let me know so I can come videotape. That's nice, Andy. That's pretty neat up there. Totally. All right. Um, and that that clock is is 1809, right? 1909, I think, is the clock, right? Um, 1908, 1909. So it's a it's a old clock. Um, all right, all those in favor of extending one year, you say aye. 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 Opposed? Any opposed? Any abstain? Oh, so sorry. was that unanimous? Yes, I believe it was. 
Um, good. Well, in the interest of time, it will, we may still have a long meeting next time, but we have a bunch more to go over, but we've certainly um, had good discussions on what we have. So um, we can certainly wait. We have a few other to extend and we have some clawbacks and then we have some other business as well. So um, we can certainly wait until our next meeting and hopefully it'll, it'll, um, we'll have time for everything. Does that sound good to everyone? Sounds excellent. Thank you. All right. Do we have a meeting to, a uh, motion to adjourn? I move. So adjourn. Second. Uh, okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.